Imagine a moment where the world falls away and it's just you and the sky. A moment etched into the heart of every single pilot, the solo flight. Today, I stumbled upon a long lost footage of my old school flight. And I invite you to come join me on this nostalgic journey as we relive the excitement, the challenges and breathtaking freedom of a day in the air. Whether you are a fellow aviation enthusiast, aspiring pilot, or someone who simply loves adventure and breathtaking views, this video is for you. I will try to keep this video short and exciting, so I have carefully selected the footage from the day that gives you the most context of being on a solo flight. But let's just start this video. We're starting at the run-up area. I have done my checks, I'm ready to go, and I'm slowly taxiing towards the runway. And I am cleared for takeoff. Right, here we go, we stopped, and the runway heading seems correct. Applying full power, time to check, all instruments is green, all, here we go. And we have the 55, rotate. Stay in here and accelerate. It is a thrilling moment as the wheels come off the ground. As you turn to your right, you will see nobody in the instructor's seat, and you know that the only one that can get you back on the ground is yourself. This wasn't my first solo flight. My first solo flight was just one landing round. This was the first time to leave the control zone and to be away from the airport. Normally when you go solo as a pilot, in the start you will just stay close to the runway making landing circuits. This way if you run into any issues, you can always go down and land on the runway. However, when leaving the control zone, you are no longer in glide range of the aerodrome, which means should you have an engine failure, you will have to land the aircraft outside of the airfield. Being alone in the sky provides in a unique perspective. It taught me to value self-reliance and the importance of staying calm under pressure and the joy of pursuing something I'm passionate about. Doing my solo flights, I've encountered a few obstacles, such as turbulence, crosswind, and sometimes the need to practice your navigation skills. But with each challenge, I grew more confident in my own skills. There's a saying in aviation, aviate, navigate, communicate. In regards to aviation, I'm flying in uncontrolled airspace, which means that you have to look out the window to ensure separation with other aircraft. Furthermore, you have to navigate, figuring out where the towns are, plot your own position on the map. In regards to communication, we're talking with an information channel, which means they don't provide control, but they do provide you with information about where other aircrafts are and what's going on within the uncontrolled airspace. Looking back on my old solo flights, I'm reminded of the excitement and the personal growth that comes with it. I encourage each of you to embrace your own passions and overcome challenges, seize opportunities that await you. The goal of this solo flight is both to build general flying skills but also to practice some air work. In this case, you'll see me do 45 degree turn. And it's always funny within aviation how theory becomes practice. Now you know that when you turn the aircraft, you generate a wake turbulence, but it's only when you really feel that you hit your own wake turbulence that you actually see the theory working out in real life. Yeah, we will have a look out. Hey, we had our own wake turbulence. When you first start flying, you'll be surprised how much of your mental capacity is occupied with flying the aircraft. Any other task almost seems impossible. Sometimes you could ask me what is 2 plus 2, and I would have to wait with answering until I figured it out and gotten the aircraft under control first. As your skills grow, you start to have a bigger perspective. And that comes into practice 
as you start to align yourself to get back to the control zone. Because in order to enter the control zone, you need to be at the correct altitude, you need to know where other aircrafts are, and you also need to have the latest weather, which is provided by an automatic weather station. As you are looking at your map, figuring out where you are, making sure you have the correct course towards the control zone, taking the weather information, looking out for other aircraft, it feels pretty cool to see that the practice has actually worked out and you are capable of doing it on your own. Final check. Negative, one, two, three, decimal, seven. Final check, five. copy, on, make sure rich. One, two, three, decimal, seven, two, five, yeah, pop, pop, pop. One way, one, one, clear to land, one, two, three degrees, eight knots. One way, one, one, clear to land. Earth, we're on quick, corner, it's two, seven, hold on, I'm going to have one, 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 now referring back to earlier, there is only one person that can get this aircraft back on the ground, and that is yourself. Now almost needless to say, there's an instant relief as soon as the wheels are back on the ground. The satisfaction that you get from knowing that you have taken off, flown around, been able to come back and land on your own. Today, I fly the Boeing 737. I'm no longer alone. I'm a first officer and I have a captain on my left. If you want to become a pilot or have any questions towards aviation, don't hesitate to ask. You can always ask down in the comments, subscribe if you like my videos, and then Thank you so much for joining me on this little school flight. And last but not least, battery and alternate switches off. Thank you for today. Please.